Sie sprechen Deutsch? No, but I do have a phrase book. With a name like Klinger? My grandfather was German. And you are English, but you have no visa. But I was told in London that... Augenblick mal. Da ist eine Engländerin da, die ohne Visum durchkommen will. Ich glaube nicht, dass sie eine Spionin ist, aber ich werde trotzdem von ihrem Pass eine Kopie machen. Well, and Klinger, why did you not apply for your visa through the official channels? Because you have no representation in London. Well, that is the fault of the British government. Yes, I know, but I was told that if I applied here, there'd be no difficulty. Why have you come to East Germany? I've always wanted to visit here. Well, then you're here as a tourist? Yes. Good, here in Ordnung. This permits you to stay in East Berlin for one week. You must not leave East Berlin and you will report your address to the police. And I must warn you that to take photographs of any industrial or military installations is a criminal offence punishable by immediate arrest and imprisonment. You are not aware of the seriousness of the offence. Your passport says you're a secretary. That's right. I'm employed by the British Foreign Office. Whatever. We had your passport photographed, Miss Kling, and your records checked. You're an operative of Section K of British Intelligence and recently engaged on counter-espionage and bond. It took you rather a long time to find out. You mean you admit you're a British agent? For seven years. And did you come here like an amateur and take photographs and place yourselves inevitably in my hands? Which is where I want to be. Why? That should be obvious. Very clumsy work, Miss Klinger. On the contrary, Colonel. Everything has worked perfectly. I've come to offer my services to the German Democratic Republic. I want to work for you. Neither do I. So it doesn't stop me from selling them. Yeah, but you want me to go to Dresden and buy cameras from the people that make them. Now, once they give me that spiel about uh, focal lengths and... Uh... I didn't say buy. You know how it is. We want to look at specifications and prices. Then you report back to London and... Uh, then you tell me what I really want to know. Which is what? A friend told me that you were once connected with American intelligence. I was born in East Germany, Mr. McGill, in Dresden. I have a brother there, Johann, a very talented musician. Years ago, he was the youngest first violinist in the Dresden Symphony Orchestra. I want you to find him. Well, why don't you find him yourself? I cannot return to Germany. Why not? In 1953, I escaped from East Germany and Johann stayed behind. Now neither of us can climb the wall. Well, then you write to each other? He hasn't written. Not in five years. And maybe he's dead. I thought so. But last week, I got a very delicately phrased message from a distant relative. 
He's a violinist. He's back in Dresden. And he hasn't tried to write you or contact you in any way? No. Well, where was he those five years? In prison, I think. What for? Johan was interested in politics. Hmm. Which party? No. Oh. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm not interested in politics. Then you can understand that I don't care whether my brother is right or left or in between. He's all that remains of my family. Listen, East Germany just isn't the safest place on earth for me. Mr. McGill, I was told that you do dangerous work for money. I offer you dangerous work and I offer you money in proportion. What proportion? Name your price. <laughs> okay. I get a legitimate visa. I travel under my own name, using my own passport. I'll obey every law in the book. And if I smell the slightest aroma of trouble, baby, I'm heading home. And if I locate your brother, it's going to cost you $20,000 plus expenses. And if I don't locate your brother, it'll cost you $20,000 plus expenses. Those are difficult terms. Do me a favor. Turn me down. No, I agree. You want me pretty badly, don't you? I want my brother. Talk to you later. It's on. Informed traveler. You are studying in Bautz in two months now. Yes, Commandant. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to learn about the theory and history of the class struggle and... And so forth. The reports on your progress are satisfactory. Thank you. As far as they go. No doubt you wish to begin active work. That is why I came. In Section K, you worked with American intelligence. Yes. Then you have the opportunity to prove your good faith. These are your orders. Study them carefully. McGill. Arrangements have been made for you to proceed to Dresden. If you have any queries, make them there. That is all. for the price. Of course, the J4 with pistol grip and built-in exposure meter is more refined. Would you like us to quote prices and delivery dates for both models? According to the modifications we discussed. Oh, yeah. Surely, selbstverständlich. How long are you staying in Dresden, Mr. McGill? Oh, a couple of days. I shall be in touch. Thanks a lot for lunch. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, is there anything else I can do for you while you are in Dresden? No, I don't think so. Um, oh. Well, I understand it's quite a musical center. Oh, it's the first in Germany. Uh, you're interested in music? Yeah, very much. Well, you know the uh, Dresdner Conservatorium and the Symphony Orchestra? 
Yes, that's right, Carl Vaughn. He's a very nice conductor. I have the Brandenburg Concertos by him. But he is conducting now at the concert zone. I shall arrange for tickets. Perhaps you would like to meet her, Bob. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Don't worry, all should be arranged. Okay, great, thank you very much. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Mac? Ruth, well, I'll be. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. I did send you Christmas cards. I know, and I thank you very much. Well, my goodness, I think uh, we ought to celebrate. Why don't we get a little champagne? Live it up. This early in the afternoon? I don't think so. There's no time like now. Well, right now, I think I'd like some fresh air. Okay, let's get a little of that. Doing in Dresden. I'm buying some cameras for this guy. You know that fellow you saw me with, Oberfeld? Uh -huh. Yeah, he makes them. So I'm ordering some for him. Oh, you are? Mm-hmm. How about that? Well, I can't be too choosy nowadays. What about you? What are you doing here? Me? Mm-hmm. It's not immediately obvious to me why someone from British Foreign Service would be studying wildlife here in East Germany. Well, I'm interested in music. Actually, it's a ruling passion. Have you heard of the Dresdener Conservatorium? Mm-hmm. Well, I've enrolled there as a student of the oboe. The oboe. It's pretty, but it's so neat, it's not natural. Well, somebody's probably around the corner dusting off the flowers. In uniform. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it probably has the distinction of being about the only place in town that's not bugged, right? Right. Well, look, Ruth, I can't say anything to you here that I couldn't have said out loud in the lobby of my hotel. And I just want you to know that in case you're on a job right now. And I thought you liked me. All I'm saying is that if you're working now, you're just wasting your time. Really? Scott's on there. You remembered? Mm-hmm. Well, we killed more than one or two of these in our time. Happier times. Mac, I never did understand what happened to you. Well, don't try. Just don't try. Uh, what about you? Why aren't you married? I thought you'd be married by now to one of those foreign office types. No, Mac. Not my style. As you ought to know. Well, here we are on a beautiful afternoon in Dresden. What shall we do? What shall we do? There's a logical answer to that. Yeah, but it's only about 4.45 in the afternoon, I think. 4.45? Mac, I'm sorry. There's a phone call I have to make. Of course. We'll take all of three minutes. Excuse me. This is Klinger. Where are you? I'm at the Prince Eugen Bar. What? I've contacted our friend. I'm with him here now. He's waiting for me. I'll have something for you later. When? I'll report back as soon as I can. <laughs> Contact with Miguel. 
He's cautious, but he's making inquiries about Liebkind and should locate him within a few days. I'll let you know when McGill and Liebkind are arrested by the East German authorities. Let me have a cover story to use in the sad event that McGill is killed. And by the way, I'm short of cash. End of message. I've just received a collector's item. Yes, it's quite satisfactory. I went to the Dresdener Hotel and contacted McGill as instructed. So I am informed. What do you know about McGill? We worked together in Greece where we exchanged information of mutual interest. After that he was transferred and we lost touch. Then I heard that he that was... he was fired from American intelligence, yes. Yes. But was he? It is not at all impossible that the whole thing was a, um, what do you call it, a put-up job. Why? To provide him with a new cover. Well, he's paid for it, that I can tell you. We have reason to be suspicious of all defectors. We require definite information about McGill's status as of now. Well, his story is that he's in Dresden... ...to buy movie equipment from her Oberfeld, I know. And suppose it happens to be true. Do you believe it? It's early days. McGill didn't spend ten years with American intelligence for nothing. And you are not speaking to an amateur. Then it stands to reason, doesn't it, that this operation is going to take time and... McGill is booked into the Dresdener Hotel for three days. When are you seeing him again? Tonight. It struck me as a little out of character. Oh? He's got tickets for the Dresden Symphony Orchestra. Ah. A music lover? Wow. Listen, I think we'd better get out of here while we can. Uh -huh. um, I want to thank Oberfell for getting those tickets for me, though. I just saw him around the corner. Why don't you meet me over at the uh, Prince Eugen Bar? It's, oh. uh, you know, you don't want to get caught in a stampede. It's all right. I don't mind at all. Just give me about ten minutes. Okay. I'll see you then. Listen. Huh? Don't wait around. Just go right on in and order at the bar. I'll do that. You are Mr. McGill, of course. That's right. That's right. Then it is a very great pleasure to welcome American music lover here to Dresden. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think we have another friend in common. Jawohl. Yeah, he was a uh, first violinist in your orchestra. Ah, very interesting. A first violin, yeah. Johann Liebke. I'm afraid Herr Liebchen left the office from many hours ago. Well, do you have any idea where I might contact him? No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't help you. I do not know if Herr Liebchen is still alive. No. Excuse me, please. Uh, no. My name is Anna. Namen. Namen. Ja, bitte. Guten Abend. Um, sprechen Sie Englisch? Kennen Sie Herrn Johann Liebkind? Johann Liebkind? Tja, den kenn ich nicht. Now, wait a minute. You've been around here quite a while, haven't you? Sie sind schon lange hier, nicht wahr? Habe keine Ahnung, wovon Sie sprechen. Liebkind kenn ich nicht. Ich weiß gar nicht, was Sie von mir wollen. Hab nie... Herr Liebkind ist ein Freund von einem Freund. Ich habe es Ihnen schon mal gesagt, Herr Liebkind kenne ich nicht. 
Wie oft soll ich es Ihnen wiederholen? Hier gibt's keinen Herrn Liebkind. Well, maybe you'll understand this. I just want his address. Dahlenstraße 14. You sure could save us a lot of trouble, buddy. You know the Dahmenstrasse? Yeah. Well, I want you to let me out a couple of blocks before you get there. Wollen Sie ein Zimmer? A good room. Oh, no. no, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for Herr Johann Liebkin. Nummer 12. Uh, Johann Liebkin? Uh, you don't know me. You are an American? Yeah. Uh, your brother asked me to look you up. Do you mind if I come in? You say my brother sent you? Yeah, he said if I was ever in Dresden, he'd give you... <laughs> Okay, Mac, what didn't you like about the bar at the Prince Eugen? The warm beer. Oh, you want some more ice? No, come here, sit down a second. I want to tell you something. Okay, I'm listening. I want to thank you for sending me those Christmas cards. You're my friend, Mac. I couldn't forget you no matter what you did. Well, everybody else seemed to. I'm sorry. I've never seen you sentimental before. Maybe you never really looked before. It happens. One day your life's one thing. Next day it's shot out from under you. 
And out of all of that, some months later, I got that Christmas card with peace on earth, goodwill toward men on it. And it saved my life. And I want to thank you for that. I'm glad. Mac, I think you'd better go. Why? It's my East German landlady. She doesn't approve of gentlemen visitors. Maybe she doesn't think you're getting enough practice. Practice? Mm-hmm. On that oboe. Have you already forgotten? Oh, no. I haven't forgotten. I'll see you tomorrow, Mac. Now, what happened while ago? I said good night, Mac. habe ich Ihnen alles gesagt. Alles. Glauben Sie mir, Herr Oberst. Liebchen, dieser Lump. Hören Sie ihn ab. Ich schwöre Ihnen, ich habe alles gesagt. Ich habe alles wirklich. Ich habe alles gesagt. Fräulein Klinger. Sit down. This Mr. McGill, is he a spy or is he not? I told you, it would need time. Time is running out. It would be easy for me to incriminate him. If you're going to allow your personal feelings to come into this, you have no use to us at all. And if I wanted to impress you, all I have to do is say, yes, he is a spy and wrap him up. We want the truth. I went to the concert last night with McGill. There's someone connected with the orchestra he wants to contact. That I'm sure of. Who? Colonel, I've only been here a few days. Surely you're in a much stronger position to follow that up. But I would much rather you did. Come now. You're an attractive woman. You're certainly attractive to McGill. You must be. Otherwise, he wouldn't have bought you champagne. Certainly not Braque Privat Cuvée. Colonel, you've impressed me. I hope he gets the most out of his stay over here. Tell me, has he ever been to a typical German beer cellar? Ah, so this is the place you spend all those long evenings with your friends from the conservatorium. Mm-hmm. We come here quite often. Thanks. Fastest way out of East Germany. something truly remarkable. There's this guy I was asked to locate in Dresden, and every time I mentioned his name, everybody just shied away from me. I found him once, but uh, he ran out on me. Then you brought me here to this little beer cellar, and lo and behold, there he is. Right in front of me. Now, what do you think of that? What's going on, Ruth? Which side are you working for? You know I can't tell you that. You don't have to. Some 
idiotic intelligence maneuver. So senseless. You really think I'm that dumb? Mac, I never... You never what? Here you are in Dresden, waltzing around in broad daylight. You don't even know the language. Now, how in the world do the East Germans swallow that? You pop up at my hotel. You lead me here. You're setting me up. Mac, I didn't want it to be you. Well, if it wasn't me, it'd be some other guy just as expendable, wouldn't it? Just so senseless. Somebody wants me to find Liebchen very badly. Who, the British? Or the East Germans? Or both? And when I find him this time, they're gonna catch me red-handed, aren't they? What are they gonna do to me then? I don't know. All that baloney about missing brother, just to get me here to trap me. Well, is it to trap Liebke? Why was he in prison for five years? Mac, listen to me. It's the truth. He's a particularly filthy variety of Nazi. Oh, that's no answer. What about you? What are you? I can't tell you. Doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter. Okay, Ruth. Now, you give old Mac some advice. What do I do now? Mac, I told you. I didn't know it would be you, and I didn't know it would come to this. Well, now that you know. <sighs> Were you a traitor, Mac? You better ask me another question. I can frame you. Yes, I can. If it's true, you're what they say you are. And if it isn't? What if I'm not a traitor? What if I never was? What if I was framed before, like now, for the greater good? What then, Ruth? Get out, Mac. Just get out. Your employers wouldn't like that too much, would they? Well, you just go while you can. You bet your life, honey. That's just what I'm gonna do. Reservation to Berlin. Yes, sir. For when? Next train. Miguel. Excuse me. I'm American, Miguel. Let's talk. Uh, I never would have guessed that. The concert hall. Here a few times. You're very cool. Section K, where you used to be. Good for you. Ruth Klinger is still working for the British intelligence. Her assignment was to defect, gain the confidence of East Germans. And keep reporting back to London like in the movies. The British knew the Germans would test her. So they supplied the test. Yeah, me and Liebkin. He's a Nazi, and the English think you're a traitor. They were prepared to throw both of you to the wolves to establish Ruth here. Stupid. How do they know the Germans are gonna use me to test Ruth? They had ways and means of drawing attention to you. As you see, it worked. What did Liebkin do? He was and is a Nazi. A big spoke in a dirty little Nazi wheel that's starting to roll again. So it's okay to frame him? For the greater good. Oh, that's what you always say. If you get together again with Liebkin, even for a moment, You've established that there's cooperation between American intelligence and Liebkind. When Ruth feeds that to the East Germans, they'll believe her and they'll trust her. It fits their theology. She'll be safe and the British will be established in East German intelligence. Uncle Sam will like that, Mac. Uncle Sam? Listen, I'm going home. Well, then the Germans will say to Ruth, what happened in the beer hall? What did you tell your friend, your lover? Why did McGill leave so quickly? And then she'll go under interrogation, and in a week or a month, a year, she'll crack. And then it's prison that nobody ever heard of her. Listen, I didn't invent this idiocy. I'm giving you the facts. What you do is up to you. That's right, Buster. If you go through with it, there's $5,000 waiting at the other end. $5,000? That's pathetic. 10000 No. Nothing's on, buddy. 
We can arrange for a getaway car to be waiting near Liebkin's place. You're crazy. You're asking me to wade straight in there and implicate myself with Liebkin. A well-equipped car. And then what? What else? What other help? Then it's up to me, right? Dresden isn't far from the West German frontier. East Germany's not far from West Germany either. I should have thought that even on a personal level... You... Uh, don't you get personal. I hear you better when you're talking money. Then you will consider it? If I don't, they'll get it, right? For good and always. $25,000 payable on demand in West Germany. I should have made it fifty. Where is Liebkin, you know? Ruth does. She'll contact you. You don't have to go through with this. Oh, you wouldn't want to see him stick you in a goulash, would we? Mac, I'm trying to say I'm sorry. You don't have to. Is that all? Mm-hmm. Just about. Good luck. You too. You have those keys. Oh, yes. Yeah. This one? Mm hmm I told you where they'd left it. Mm. Look, what are we doing here? Playing soldier. We're just spinning our wheels. Why don't we just let Liebkin and Intelligence go on and on? We got the keys. There's a car over there. Why don't we just get in it and take off right now? I can't, Mac. Come on. Okay. Just heard the patter of little feet. Now don't look back. Just keep going straight ahead. Don't ever look back. Okay, Liebling, let's go. I'm getting you out of here. Why are you hounding me? I don't want to come. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Well, if that's what's holding us up, McGill's my name. Now, let's move. I never heard of you before. I've done nothing. You've done enough. You've just been framed by being with me. Let me go. Five years in prison. I've been denazified officially. They're going to put you away for good after this. And what will your people do? I don't know. Let's find out. I'll try to get you out of here. Oh, very touching. You do it from the bottom of your heart, eh? No, thanks. I have work to do here. I can hide. I hid before. Yes or no? 
Maskewitsch, haben Sie die Nummer? 1A3675. Ein grüner Maskewitsch, ja. Achtung, Achtung, Alarm blau, Alarm blau an alle Polizeistreifen. Ein grüner Maskewitsch, Nummer 1A3675 in Richtung Grenze. Liebkind was suspicious. He didn't seem to know McGill. McGill drew a gun and forced him to go with him, and that's all I know until I heard the shots. Yeah. That's all you know? Yes. And what does it indicate to you? It's not my job to draw conclusions, Colonel. That is true. We wanted the facts. Oh, what was it? You had it bugged. Of course. Why are you hounding me? Come on. I don't want to come. I don't know who you are. I don't, I don't want to know who you are. Gill's my name. Now move. Just as I told you. But what does it prove? That I told you the truth. Yes, but the truth reveals little. Why did McGill fire his gun? Liebkind was panicking. 
Or was it perhaps to keep Liebkin from speaking in a room that McGill suspected of having hidden ears? And again, why did Liebkin run away and straight into a bullet from one of our enormously stupid men? Well, perhaps they'd conducted their business and then separated to try and escape. Perhaps there was no business to conduct. I think, sir, I've done everything I could possibly do. Yes, Miss Klinger, that I must admit. Unfortunately, it was inconclusive. Is Miguel still with American intelligence? Was his organization involved with Liebkin? Are you reliable? You see, we don't know. So with my blessings, you will return to school until such time as we can find you another assignment. You mean another test? But of course, another test. Unless, of course, we can obtain more direct information from McGill. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You were lucky. What about Ruth? You'll never know him, girl. We'll clean you up and book you on a flight to London. Tonight too soon? Now, about that money. Now, don't you forget about that money. Don't you want a lift? No, you've done enough for me. Thanks. 